greetings of the day. In this session, we will concentrate on stability analysis of the control system. Now, for a controller or a control system, once we find response of the system for the given input, it is important to check whether the system is stable or unstable. So for that purpose, stability analysis is one of the important content in the control system. Now, first we will concentrate on pole zero plot. Now to analyze the pole zero plot, we will consider a transfer function, general transfer function C of S by R of S, which may be having some numerator polynomial P of S and denominator polynomial Q of S and some system gain K. Now this P of S and Q of S instead of the polynomials we will represent in terms of roots of the polynomial P of S equal to 0 or Q of S equal to 0. So if the P of S roots are represented by Z1, Z2 or in a quadrant polynomials. So we are representing this transfer function in terms of the real roots Z1, Z2 or quadratic rules. Similarly, this poles we are representing as poles with 0 and S plus P1, S plus P2, real roots and complex roots. Now, zeros of the transfer function is obtained by equating numerator polynomial to 0. These roots may be real, zeros may be real, Z1 and Z2 or it may be a complex. And these roots or zeros are represented by dots. Poles of the transfer function obtained by equating Q of S to 0, denominator polynomial. And these roots may be a real or it may be a complex and these zeros are represented by cross multiplication symbol. Now this roots either may be zero or uh, sorry roots may be real or complex. Only two options it may be a real or it may be a complex. So in general form of poles and zeros are sigma plus j omega. Now if we plot these poles and zeros as zeros by dot or poles by star, it looks something like this, where real axis and imaginary axis and based on the poles, if the poles are real on negative side if it is or it may be a complex. If it is a complex, it will be pair complex and its conjugate also exists. So similarly zeros if it is only the real or it may be a complex conjugate, conjugate pairs. So this is a pole zero plot. Now we will come to concepts of stability. Now what is the step stability? A system is said to be stable if its output is under control. So if the output is under control, then it is a stable. Output is under control means as limit as t tends to infinity c of t if it is a constant. So if it is a infinite means output is uncontrolled. So, in such a case, it is unstable. So, limit as t tends to infinity, c of t, if it is a constant, the system is stable. Or, stable system produces bounded output for bounded input. So, for some range of inputs, it will produce a bounded output. Constant input, it will produce a constant output. Now, then we will see the type of stability. Now, stability may be 
absolute stability absolute stability means a system is said to be absolutely stable if it is stable for all range of system component values so whatever may be the value of the input or parameter the system is stable means it will produce a constant some constant output or output is under control then the conditional stability so this in this case the stability is based on a condition conditional so stability depends on a condition so a system is said to be conditional stable if it is stable that means output is under control for a certain range of system component values so in this case it is not for all set of component value but for certain set of component value the system is stable in such a case it is called as marginally stable uh, conditional stable then marginal stability a system is marginally stable if it produces an output with a constant amplitude and frequency means here limit as t tends to infinity c of t is not a constant but it is not a infinity but it is between two values between a and b between two constants so any time this c of t response is exists between two constant that it is called as marginal stability now if you see the graph so here the output initial having a transient then it is a constant so this is example for absolute stability if this is for some range of system components then it becomes a conditional whereas this plot here if we see the output variation is between 0 to 2 it is neither going below 0 not exceeding 2 it is between two values so here it is with a constant amplitude as well as some frequency so this is the example of marginal stability now here this is unstable so because as time increases it goes to infinity so as the time t tends to infinity this amplitude changes and it goes to infinity so this is the waveform for unstable system this is the waveform for marginal stable stable system this is for stable system it may be conditional or absolute now from the waveform and or the from the expression c of t we can check whether the system is stable or unstable but finding the stability of the system from the expression c of t or from the waveform is difficult because finding the c of t from the transfer function is a tedious one so it would be better if we analyze the stability of the system from the transfer function itself that is from the s domain so to derive the relation between the stability and the transfer function we will consider a system with transfer function c of s by r of s equal to omega n square divided by s plus s1 into s plus s2 so from the poles and zeros concept the poles of this closed loop system is obtained by equating denominator polynomial to zero so if i equate this denominator equation to zero i'll get s is equal to minus s1 and s equal to minus s2 two poles which are negative now for this transfer function if we apply a step input we will get the c of t as 1 min plus b e to the power minus s t plus c e to the power minus s t 
So from the concepts of stability, the system is stable if limit as t tends to infinity c of t is a constant. So if we apply limit as c tends to infinity to this c of t, we will get 1 because e to the power minus infinity is 0. So these two terms become 0 because it is a minus. That means this becomes 0 if the poles are negative. Now suppose the c of t is expression something like this that is 1 plus b u to the power s1 t plus c u to the power s2 t. Here positive s1 and positive s2 that means poles are positive. So in that case if I apply as limit as t tends to infinity it becomes infinite it's uncontrolled. So the system is unstable. So from this simple example, this system is under control when the poles are negative real part. Negative real part is because the poles may be a real or complex. But in the complex, real part is negative, then it becomes this term exponentially decaying terms become zero. But if the real part is positive, it leads to unstable. So from this we can conclude that for the system to be stable, closed loop system poles should have negative real part. Now if closed loop poles are non-repeated imaginary values, that means here S1 and S2 instead of the real if they are imaginary. Real part is zero only imaginary terms and not repeated like plus or minus J2. So in that case the system is marginally stable. In undamped case we have seen the roots of the characteristic equation are imaginary. So in that case the system is marginally stable. Now closed loop poles are repeated imaginary poles or positive part real part is positive. In those case the system is unstable. So or other than these two cases that means real part is neither negative or non-repeated imaginary values. In that case, the system is unstable. Now, from this system, we can analyze the system for very small order, second order or a maximum third order where we can find out the poles. Now, if the system is with the order of 10 or 15, or for higher order system, analyzing the stability from the calculation of the poles is once again difficult. So for lower first, stability is in terms of time domain is transferred to S domain. Now here in the S domain for lower order system, by the calculation of the poles, we can identify whether the system is stable or unstable but for higher order system, how to analyze the stability. So to find the higher order system, we will use Ruth Hervis criteria. So this is the criteria developed by Ruth as well as Hervis simultaneously, but one is from US and another is from Germany. So same decade they identified the stability condition. So it is named as Ruth Arvis criteria. So according to them, absolute stability of the system can be obtained directly from the coefficients of characteristic equation. That is 1 plus g of s h of s equal to 0. That is equating denominator polynomial to 0. Now let the characteristic polynomial be 
a naught s to the power n plus a1 s to the power n minus 1 plus a2 s to the power n minus 2 and so on plus a to the power n. This is the polynomial where a naught a1 a2 a n are real and all of the same sign. Now, once you get the characteristic polynomial, to find out the stability, we need to form a Ruth array table. Now, Ruth array table is to be formed to analyze the stability. So, for this characteristic equation, characteristic polynomial, based on the order of this equation, first we will write a row element of the matrix s to the power n such a way that a n columns are coefficient of s to the power n s to the power n minus 2 s to the power n minus 4 and so on coefficients with the order difference 2 coefficient of s to the power n n minus 2 n minus 4 n minus 6 and so on then s to the power n minus 1 row is obtained by placing the coefficient of s to the power n minus 1, n minus 3, n minus 5, n minus 7. So s to the power n minus 1 coefficient is a1, n minus 3 coefficient is a3 and so on. So first two rows of the table is obtained from the characteristic polynomial s to the power n s to the power n minus 1 then the remaining rows s to the power n minus 2 s to the power n minus 3 s to the power n minus 4 up to s to the power 0 is obtained by a general rule that is third row element is obtained by a1 a2 minus a0 a3 divided by a1 this element so a1 a2 minus a0 a3 divided by a1 second column element of third row that is b2 is obtained by a1 a4 minus a0 a5 divided by a1 Similarly, continuous. So, first column and the successive one. A1, A6 minus A0, A7 by A1 is B3. Similarly, I need to continue in that row. Then, fourth column, row C1 is obtained by B1, A3 minus A1, B2 divided by B1 b1 a3 minus a1 b2 divided by b1 c2 element b1 a5 minus a1 b3 divided by b1 and so on similarly you have to complete all the rows and you have to complete the table in such a way that order from s to the power n to s to the power 0 so once you complete this table, then the system is stable if and only if all the elements of first column of the table are positive. A system is stable if and only if all the elements of the first column of the root table are positive or of same sign. It should be same sign or it is a positive. Normally it is a positive only. But in general condition, the system is said to be stable if and only if all the elements of the first column of the table are of same sign. Now, if any sign changes in the first column indicates that the system is unstable. So any sign changes in the first column takes place, then the system is unstable. And number of sign changes equal to number of poles with 
positive real value. So as many sign changes in the first column is equal to number of poles with positive real value means right half of the S plane. Consider an example. Determine the stability of the system whose characteristic equation is s to the power 4 plus 5 s cube plus 20 s square plus 40 s cube. s plus 50 equal to 0. It is not a s cube, 40 s. So it is 40 s, not s cube. So in this case, If we write the table s to the power 4, so coefficient of s to the power 4 in the first column 1, s square 20 and a constant s to the power 0, 50. In the second row s cube coefficient 5 and s coefficient 40. These first two rows always obtain from the given characteristic equation. Now, s square coefficient, this is obtained by 5 into 20, that is 100, minus 1 into 40, 100 minus 40 is 60, divided by 5. So, 5 into 20 minus 1 into 40 divided by 5, that is 12. Then, uh, this element, 5 into 50 minus 1 into 0, here no values means 0 divided by 5. So it is 50. Then S1 row. This is obtained by 12 into 40 minus 5 into 50. So 12 into 40 is 480 minus 250 that is 230 divided by 12 is 19.167. And next is no element so it is 0 s to the power 0 is 19.167 into 50 minus 12 into 0 divided by 19.17 so 50. So after completing the table check first column all are of with same sign. So the system is stable. Now consider the another problem. Determine the stability of the system whose characteristic equation is s to the power 5 plus 2 s to the power 4 plus 4s cube plus 4s square plus 3s plus 8 equal to 0. So from this characteristic equation we will write the table. So first s to the power 5. So s to the power 5 coefficient is 1. Then 5 minus 2. That is s cube coefficient is 4. s coefficient is 3. Then s to the power 4. s to the power 4 coefficient is 2 s square coefficient is 4, s to the power 0 coefficient is 8. So these two from the table, uh, from the characteristic equation, s cube coefficient, that is 2 into 4 minus 1 into 4 divided by 2, 2 into 4 is 8 minus 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 into 3 is 6 minus 8 divided by 2 minus 1, next column. 2 into 4, 8 minus 2 into 4, 8, 8 minus, minus, minus 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 2 into 8 minus 2, into, so 8, then 5 into 1, Min, uh, minus 1, minus 5, minus 16, minus 21, divided by 5, minus 4.25. This is the 8. So if we check in the first column, all are positive, then changes to negative, negative to positive. So two sign changes in the first column, hence the system is unstable. As well as two sign changes in the first column, that means two poles with positive real part. So in this we are not calculating the poles but still we will add. Thank you.